Hello everyone, I am Ankit and you are watching Steady IQIS English Channel. Today we are going to discuss a very important genetic editing tool known as CRISPR-Cas9 and also a modification of CRISPR-Cas9 that is base editing. But why are we discussing genetic editing today? Let me give you the context of our today's discussion. Now if you read this, a 9 month old boy in the country of United States who was born with a rare genetic disorder has become the first known person to have successfully received a custom gene editing treatment known as base editing and this information was updated on a journal called as new england journal of medicine now scientists they say that this technology known as base editing it can potentially treat thousands of uncommon genetic diseases but there are certain roadblocks that might pose challenges to its universal adoption what are these roadblocks do not worry i will tell you in our today's discussion itself right so in this regard let me give you the basic understanding before we move on to crispr cas9 editing system right now the genetic information in our dna it is coded or it is stored in different nucleotide bases as much as four different nucleotide bases and these are adenine guanine cytosine as well as thymine now these bases they exist in pairs and therefore then they are stacked on one at the top of each other creating a horizontal layers of double helix structure and this is very double helix structure what makes it a dna right so this is the dna i'm telling you about and these are base pairs which are attached to it how are these base pair attached i will also let you know in our today's discussion itself right now what you need to understand that in these base pairs only a certain way these base pairs can be paired with each other for example adenine can only be paired with thymine whereas cytosine can only be paired with guanine so in case this pairing is affected automatically it leads to abnormal abnormality in our dna's right so that is why please pay a close attention adenine can only be paired with thymine whereas cytosine can only be paired with guanine right so this is what you need to understand before we delve into the helical structure of DNAs and how we make editing in these DNAs, right? Now, Kyle Mudloon Jr., KJ, is the name of the kid that we are talking about and he suffered from a genetic disorder known as CPS1 deficiency and because of this CPS1 deficiency in KJ, it led to accumulation of toxic levels of ammonia in his blood now toxic levels of ammonia if they accumulate too much into a blood if not controlled it can even lead to death of the patient right so this genetic disorder like the one kj suffered from occurs due to presence of abnormality in your dna sequence that is in cases of mispairing it may happen suppose if adenine instead of being paired with thymine it gets paired with guanine similarly if guanine instead of being paired with cytosine gets paired with Thymine, this leads to abnormality in a DNA. So, this DNA abnormality also existed in KJ and this led to CPS1 deficiency. So, to treat KJ from the uh, genetic disorder, scientists and doctors in University of Pennsylvania and also Children's Hospital in the city of Philadelphia, they developed a personalized treatment based on the idea of base editing base editing basically is a newer version of the very famous crispr cas9 technology so how base 9 uh, base editing works for that we need to first understand how crispr cas9 technology works right so first let us understand how crispr cas9 technology works now the most simple annotation that i give you to compare crispr cas9 is the computer system in which you use cut copy paste by adding control x and control v so in computers you use control x to cut and you use control v to paste right so therefore this is basically a same type of a technique which uses a molecular scissor i'll tell you what is the molecular scissor right so when a patient is undertaking a treatment under crispr cas9 here the first task of the healthcare service provider is to identify the abnormality in the patient's dna sequence and this abnormality is the one that is causing the disease in the patient so the first a step in this regard is to identify the abnormality in DNA sequence. And once scientists and doctors identify the abnormality in the base sequence, they then create a guide RNA which gets attached to the molecular scissor. Here, scissor is basically Cas9, right? So, 
molecular scissor i am talking about is cas9 so what scientists do first is identify the uh, genetic uh, abnormality in the patient and then after they identify the genetic abnormality they create a guide rna which will then target the cells which is affected in the patient and this guide rna is attached to the molecular scissor cas9 so this is the second step where you attach a guide rna to the molecular scissor cas9 now let us understand what are the different steps in this regard now once the guide rna it recognizes bad dna sequence in the patient then the molecular scissor here cas9 it cuts the dna at the specified location and this process is called as double strand break in the crispr cas9 method why is it called as double strand break because it gets rid of the gna sequence which is causing the illness in the patient right so here this is the sample of dna and suppose if the this pairing is an abnormal pairing right so what the molecular scissor will do here is it will make a cut here and it will make a cut here basically eliminating or removing this abnormal dna from the dna of the patient so therefore when the cut is made on these two strands of dna that is why it is called as double strand cut understood and this happens in the CRISPR-Cas9 editing tool that it makes a double editing cut and removing the entire abnormal pairing in the DNA sequence. So this is how the CRISPR-Cas9 work and DNA this strand also has the ability to naturally reproduce itself and it gets reattached and repairs itself meaning if left unattended after cutting the dna there is a fair bit of chance that the bad sequence might regrow and leading to recovery not recovery but rather bringing the uh, disease back again right so to tackle this issue of reformation of the bad sequence in the dna what scientists do that they also supply the correct dna sequence from a foreign object or a forest foreign molecular organism after the cutting process takes place and this foreign dna sequence get attached to your dna and then repairs the broken strand from a correct dna which repairs or recovers your um, abnormality in the dna sequence so this was the third step that is it takes the cutting of the abnormal dna and the fourth step was the resupply of a actual or a good dna from a foreign molecular organism right so this is how crispr cas9 works what you need to remember in crispr cas9 it makes a double stranded break which eliminates the entire abnormal dna from the patient's dna sequence right so this was crispr cas9 now let us understand how gene editing works right now base editing works now over the years that is this crispr cas9 has been in scientific community for over past 10 years right but significantly there were many improvements to the original crispr cas9 techniques have been made by scientists to make it more safer and more precise in its efficacy and for that an evolved version of crispr cas9 this tool is called as base editing tool now the difference between base editing and crispr cas9 is the way they modify your dna structure so let us understand how different is base editing as compared to crispr cas9 when it comes to modification in dna right so here when you're using the base editing it does not make a double strand break rather what base editing does that it targets a single base conversion with the help of molecular scissor that is cas9 enzyme and this is fused to a base modifying enzyme allowing the scientist to repair only the particular pair of the nucleotide base right so for instance if there is a misplaced pair of a and c or misplaced pair of c and t here the editing will be made to correct it a and t right similarly if misplaced pair is a and c you can either change a by pairing it with t or you can either pair change a by pairing c with guanine right so this is how base editing works what you need to understand i told you the crispr cas9 makes changes in both of these sides that is why it is called as double strand break but in this is the abnormal dna base editing will make a cut here and only remove a 
portion of the pairing, not the entire pairing. And then if this was a misplaced pair of A and C, it could be changed to by making guanine here, therefore making the pair complete. Understand? So this is why it differs from CRISPR-Cas9 that here the cut is only made in this part and not in this part, right? So therefore it is only a single strand break as compared to CRISPR-Cas9. And this is done to correct the misplaced bearing that is usually the reason why genetic diseases occur in any human being. So this is the biggest difference between CRISPR-Cas9 and base editing. Now to treat KJ, the scientists, they first determined which was the misplaced base in his DNA that was causing the genetic condition in KJ and then they reprogrammed the base editing tool to find and rewrite the target base itself. And this process as compared to CRISPR-Cas9, I told you that was a process of molecular scissor, rather this can be equated with a process of pencil and eraser. What happens if you are using a pencil and eraser rather than pen? You need not make a cut. You just can just remove the part that is incorrect and correct it accordingly. Therefore, base editing is much more similar to using pen and pencil and eraser as compared to the CRISPR-Cas9 which was using molecular scissor, right? So, this is the basic difference between CRISPR-Cas9 and base editing. I hope I've made everything clear, right? Now let us understand what are the challenges in this kind of a treatment. I told you in terms of effectiveness or efficacy, this is very good because it treats any patient with their respective genetic condition. But the negative aspect about these treatments that they are very expensive in nature. Therefore, these treatments will not be accessible to most people, particularly people who are poor or people who are belonging to middle class. Also, the base editing tool that was used on KJ, it was a one-off treatment which was specifically designed based on the unique disorder that just KJ had, right? Therefore, you can't use this particular treatment tool which was catered to KJ on any other patient who is suffering from different genetic disorder. And this makes it a commercially unviable project. Why? Because any pharma company, whenever they are developing any medicine or any vaccine, they target most of the people who might be suffering from that disease. But if only one person is suffering from a particular kind of a genetic disorder, it does not make a commercial sense for big pharma companies to make such a tool for just one patient because they won't be able to recover the cost undertaken in research and development of that tool, right? So therefore, it disincentivizes pharmaceutical companies to invest in the development because investment cost is much high as compared to the cost that can be recovered from one patient. Also, suppose if the cost is also reduced for these kind of treatment, the another hurdle that it might create in wider adoption is the regulatory approval because in India, regulatory approval might take a long period of time and then what happens if you are designing a product for a patient and what happens, God forbid, if the patient dies, right? So your entire uh, investment goes bad. Similarly, in during regulatory approval, the doctors or even the scientists may face certain red tapeism from the bureaucrats also. So these are the economic challenges, these are regulatory challenges and these are procedural challenges that plague wider adoption of such treatments despite their very high efficacy. Understood? So this is all from my side for today's discussion. Before ending the today's session, I'd want each and every one of you to solve this practice question. There are two statements and you have to identify the correct statement. And the ones who will answer it correctly in the comment section, I will like your comment so you'll understand your answer is a right answer. And if you want to download the notes for this session, they will be available on my telegram channel, which is called as ATS Live. To, to search this channel, you need to enter the words ATS Live on the search bar of your app. You'll find the channel, subscribe to it if you still haven't. And if you still, for some reason, you are unable to find the channel, this is the QR code, scan it, definitely you'll find the channel, okay? Download the notes, they will be available after this video ends, okay? So this is all from my side for today. I'll see you again tomorrow at 9 p.m. Until then, please have a very good day.